Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we'll take a look at how you can work with the brand new UDIMS in Blender with Substance Painter. We'll look at some bugs and issues that you may encounter while working with UDIMS. And within the same time, we're going to share a couple of tips and tricks between Substance Painter and UDIMS as we proceed. You can also check out the previous video about UDIMS if you're new to UVs and UDIMS in Blender as that video might be a prerequisite to this one. And so with that said, let's get right into it. So by default, we already covered in a different video how you can cut your seams and also how you can create UDIMS. So with that done, the next thing which we need to do is export this monkey head, which is called Suzanne, over to Substance Painter. So the reason why we're exporting this to Substance Painter is so that we can create the textures really quickly and at the same time, we can see what the workflow looks like by just doing a round trip back from Substance Painter into Blender. And so with Substance Painter open here, the Substance Painter version which I have right now is the Substance Painter 2019.3. We're going to simply come over here and open up this file. So you just go over to this new load and I'm going to load up the Susan head here. I want to make sure I have uh, create a texture set per UDIM type. So remember in Blender, we already created our UDIMs into three different sections. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK to load this directly here. If you want to bake your texture set, you can actually come over here and choose to bake the texture sets by yourself. So I'm also going to just simply click here. We don't want thickness. We don't have ID. Now you can also choose to set the texture set size that you want to work with. So at the same time, if you want to bake for all texture sets, you can also do that here. So with this done, next thing which you want to do is simply click on OK and then you can go ahead and start applying textures. So I'm going to just simply push it over here and apply the desired textures that we want. Now I want to play with something that is actually new to this version of, you know, Substance Painter. And at the same time, I think I noticed something. So right now you can see through this object. So just in case you have a problem like this, how you can fix that in case you're having all this back face calling, how you can fix this is relatively easy so what you can do is you can come over here where you have your shader setting click here and make sure you go over to this path that says pbr meta rough with alpha test and that way you're going to be able to solve that problem all right so with this done next thing which you want to do is you may want to start texturing this how you choose so we just want to do a simple round trip so it doesn't really matter what we do although i would like to play with a couple of new features that exist in substance painter 2019.3 and so I'm just going to come over here and just in case you don't know, we already covered a video about that. So I'm going to get my Photoshop brush right here and I can use the Photoshop brush, turn on symmetry and select this exact color which I want and I can start making those texture paintings. If you want to paint some other section, you can also switch over to the texture set. Like right now, this has to do with the eyes. So we have something like this. And so if for some reason you want to add things like emission, how you can create emission is very simple. So you can always just come over to this part and make sure you have all of this stretched down so you can have some room. Click on the plus sign, go down to this place where you have emissive and then you're going to have the emissive uh, slot. So now, once you have this emissive slot, it's very, very necessary that you need to create a brand new layer where you can paint your emission. So a very good example for that now is by just simply clicking here. So I want to go ahead and work with this alpha and I can come over here with this brand new one. We don't want this to have contribution to metalness. We don't want it to have contribution here. We just want color and emission. And for the emission, we would like to have a color of, you know, maybe say green, for example. And then if you start painting, you start seeing that emission there. If you don't want to have anything that has to do with color, then you can take that out. And once you paint, you're going to see that green there. At the same time, since you'll be coming from Blender, you'll probably be asking about the new stroke ratio brush that exists or ratio setting that exists. So you can also get something like that directly here. So what you need to do is go all the way and turn up spacing. So once you start turning up spacing, you can see that. And I think maybe we should get a different color this time. So let me just simply select this and go for a much more bluish color. Probably, probably that should work. Maybe this should work. And yes, so once we get this and you start stroking, you can start seeing something like that. Now I'm going to switch this to another prominent color and maybe we can just simply have that happen around here. And, you know, we can also get another color and all of these colors that we're painting are just emissions that we are painting. 
all right so now that we have this uh dirty looking thing going on for us we can you know just simply add a little bit of touch so for that touch i might simply come back here select this layer turn this off turn this on and you know just simply move over to something else that i want and use this brush to just scatter things around now by just scattering these things around i would want to introduce some very cool interesting things and one of the cool things which i would like to introduce here is one of the filters that has also showed up with substance painter 2019.3 and i kind of think that this one is really cool so if you click here and add the filter you will notice that we have that filter there and yes we did cover this in the previous video so you can check that one out as well i just want to get the watercolor and i want the watercolor to just work only here so if i turn off this watercolor you can see what we have but if i simply drop the watercolor you can also now see what we have you can increase how much you want this to you know spread or you can simply turn this down on how you want it to actually react and at the same time we can still use this to play with the density of what we want and so if you don't want to work with the whites let's say you see the paper that you can tell i mean if you take a look at this you can see what the paper looks like and if you don't want to work with this you can simply come here and turn off and hide the paper So with this done, the next thing which we want to do now is to get this out of here and move it over to Blender. We come through and say we want to export our textures and, you know, specify where you want to export these things to. So with this fully exported, let's jump right into Blender and see what and what we can do with this. So I'm just going to simply open the folder just to make sure that I have this open. And I'm also going to just simply pop up Blender directly here. All right. So with Blender open here, I'm just going to go ahead and split this open, switch this to the UV tiles just to be sure that we are working with the same image and if i simply press tab on the key you're going to notice we have the whole uv tiles here so be sure to check out the video in case you don't know how we created this and with this done the next thing which i need to do is just press the tab key just to make sure i have that done i'm going to select here and switch this to the shader editor so with the shader editor i'm just going to select this right now and i'm going to show you guys a couple of stuff so just in case you are not used to blender or you were trying to get your feet wet how you actually attach images to this or how you actually texture this is you first of all need an image texture which is this by default and then you need something called mapping and this mapping will tell the uv coordinate or the coordinate or the texture coordinate how to map this texture how to map this texture to this shader that will be applied to this object okay so that is how it works so you can select this vector so vector is actually a three point number one two three xyz rgb and you can get one two three and map it over to the vector color goes to base color and there you are next thing i need to bring out something called the texture coordinate so texture coordinate depending on where your texture is coming from if you're generating textures you can use this and you're going to find you know some very interesting looks if you're getting textures from the normals you can use that if you're getting textures from your uv you can use this you get the idea and then we can hit open and navigate to where we have our textures so we can navigate to where we have our textures and our textures we actually saved it here and inside somewhere called suzanne select the base texture or you know you can simply drag and drop that base texture so you can select it and simply hit the word open so if you open it you can notice that directly you have that texture directly here now in some cases all right this is very rare but in some cases you may not be able to see your textures automatically okay so what you need to do is you need to flicker this for a while so you need to switch from this to that switch back and forth you know switch back and forth switch back and forth and the reason why you may not see this is for some and the reason why you may not see this is if this is set to single you're only going to see just the first you know the first image okay so you're just going to see the first image and the first image is the first uv tile which is just this one and you can see that from here so if i simply turn these ones off this is the first one which you're going to see all right so you may need to come over to blender and set this to 
tiled all right so with that done the next thing which you probably want to do now is just to simply come in here add a couple more so you can simply add a couple more or if you select this and hit shift d you can make copies so you can simply select these copies and still repipe this so you can repipe this down to this part and you remember we added a mission earlier so we can still use the color and pipe it into the emission just to make sure that we have this in emitting so for this one i'm just going to select that right now and click over here click on the new stuff and simply add the emission that we selected or the emission that we created earlier so i'm just going to bring this down so you guys can see right about here so let's find the emission and we have this emissive and i'm just going to simply select this and say open and with the emissive selected you can now see we have all of the emissive stuff driving through if i take this out you see we don't have that if i plug this in now you see we have this running perfectly and one of the things i think you guys may really need to know is once you have something buggy like that like what we talked about earlier you may need to actually close save your work close blender and come back of course this is still in alpha and it's definitely going to only get better and yeah so now we have that one going and i can also come over here and hold down shift and d to make another copy so i can simply do that so if i hit shift d i can make another copy and this copy right now, I think this should be for metalness, I guess. So I'm also going to simply bring this over to this place and do the whole connection again. So with all of these nodes connected, probably the next thing which you want to do is just simply go in and confirm that this that you have right here okay so let's just take a look at this matches what you have here in substance painter and as simple as it is just jump into ev let's duplicate this light so one of the questions you might be asking is how can you increase the intensity of the emission so how you can do that is very simple so for this one all you need to do is come over here hit shift and a go over to this part called convert and go all the way to where you have the vector mats and simply click on the vector mats i'm going to simply click this and add it within this part where i have the line crossing and you can see we have this so if i simply select this right now and change this to multiply i can multiply this value by this same value which would be really cool but that's not what we want we want to multiply this value by a number of let's say six by six by six and if you turn that six by six by six and turn off the entire light you now get something way more if i come over here and make this two by two by two i'm going to have something a little bit less and if I simply turn this back to zero by zero by zero, you're going to have something like that. All right. So you want, may want to have maybe some higher values. You can change all of that and you can do whatever you want. So in case you have issues like we have with the emission, all you have to do is just simply delete the, you know, the image texture and bring it back again, then reconnect. So these are, you know, like slightly hitches you might find. But of course, this tool still works and, you know, it kind of makes a lot of sense. So with this now, you can actually do whatever thing that you want. Let's actually crank this up a little bit more so I can go for 30 by 30 by 30. And there you have it. And since this is a vector, we can actually make this 10 so we can have less. Or, you know, we can make this 50 so that we can have more. So I can go for 50 by 30 by 30. And you can see the red, green and blue channel. The red channel is a little bit too much then we can actually increase you know the green channel to become a little bit more you can increase the red channel to be more and uh, we can dial those down to get something like this and that's about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video you learned something from me go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace